From the moment Malaysia Flight 370 took off, it was communicating with the satellite, orbiting more than 22,000 miles above Earth, sending out pings or electronic handshakes to say, I'm here and OK. The ping is really like your cell phone checking it, that it's connected with the cell phone network. The first three recorded pings come between 12.30 and 1 a.m. local time as the plane takes off from Kuala Lumpur and ascends. All normal stuff. The first three pings are messages which are carrying the data about the performance of the engines on the plane. At 1.19 a.m., the co-pilot sends his final message to air traffic control. All right, good night. Then the transponder, which identifies the plane to civilian radar, stops communicating. Between 1.21 and 1.28 a.m., radar shows the plane makes a sharp left turn, then dips as low as 12,000 feet. At 2.22 a.m., as the plane appears to be making another turn, the satellite then picks up three more electronic pings, one right after the other, in the span of just a few minutes. It looks like they were initiated by the plane because the plane had lost contact with the satellite network. After that quick turn, uh, maybe the plane uh, uh, banked sharply. Whatever happens is seemingly resolved, as Malaysia 370 sends hourly pings or handshakes at 340, 440, 540, 640, and 811 a.m. The hourly pings are really just the network checking that everything's going on. That sort of indicates that the plane is flying smoothly. But then something very unusual happens. A partial ping just eight minutes later, recorded at 8.19 a.m., the last electronic signal before the plane disappears. And the plane wasn't able to communicate back again, uh, and so the handshaking wasn't completed. The plane must have turned sharply or stalled or dived, something to cause the terminal on top of the plane to be pointed away from the satellite and then to try and re-establish contact. So Tim Farah, the, the aviation analyst I spoke with today, tells me that the significance of this is essentially twofold. Whatever trouble the plane was having in that burst of pings around the left turn could be the same problem that was resurfacing during the flight's final moments. And second, also as well, we know that if the precise time of the plane lost its ability to communicate and went down, investigators can now dramatically narrow the search area to look for that plane's debris. Well, so those are the important parts about recognizing those pings between the plane and the satellite. Yeah, they're looking for any clue that could help uh, find some of that wreckage.